What you have here is, is examples of cancer cells that are being killed by, by yes. natural plant substances. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's yes. quite a statement. So many years, I tell the people that there is something unique in the desert, and suddenly I was able to prove it. So we've seen how Israeli innovation has helped with the desert problem. But now we're going to meet something slightly different. We're on our way up to Netanya, which is in the northern coastal area of Israel, to meet with Cropex, which is this new startup company who've developed a new sensor package, which is supposed to help farmers around the world have a deeper understanding of exactly what's happening in their field in real time. Tomil, we're about to see a demonstration of the system do you want to introduce your all-star team before we uh, get started? Yeah, sure thing. Avi recently did Aliyah from New Jersey. Uh, he's an agronomist and data scientist on the agronomy team. And Guy is the VP of agronomy. He knows everything there is to know. So he's the, the guy with the plan, huh? Exactly, the brain. Mai uh, grew up in Los Angeles. She's uh, part of the customer service team. So, so this is it. I mean, I was expecting, you know, some heavy machinery. It looks like you guys brought the same equipment I have at home. It's just uh, one power tool, and that's all you need. All I do is I find where I want to put it in the field, and then I dig a hole. Just make sure. And then we just screw it into the ground as such. And it's that simple. I can now see the data from the soil. I can see that it was recently fertilized. I can see the moisture content of the soil, and I can see soil temperature. So with this data that I get immediately, the farmer can make much better decisions. CropEx represents Israeli agritech at its finest. It's a smart farming device that gives farmers real-time insights into the conditions of their soil, and it's being used around the world. CropEx is part of the agtech revolution. So we have sensors in this device that measure the moisture of the soil, electroconductivity, which is salinity, the mm -hmm. saltiness of the soil. Uh, we connect that to nitrogen and fertility and temperature. Uh, the part that you see out of the ground transmits to the cloud. What have farmers been doing so far? In many places, yeah, they do this. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Still today in the first world. Yeah. We create much more value between 10 and 20% yield increasement, which is, which is huge. huge. With every sensor that is installed across the globe, our system continues to learn and to get smarter. And the power of the system grows because the system Because has, well, the system is getting more the clever. System, yeah, exactly. When I was done with my previous startup, I really looked for something different that kind of had a do-good part to it. Uh, you know, since then, I haven't looked back. Yet again, the challenges Israelis are facing have led to solutions that impact people everywhere in the world. This is what happens when God blesses a nation, promises to prosper them, and then empowers them to carry out his promises. If you can make it in the Arava, you can probably make it anywhere in Israel. If you want to be a pioneer in any field of expertise, this mm -hmm. is the place to be. It's a huge honor being able to expose Israel to the world through a positive technology, you know, that, that really helps save the globe. From the Arava, where people are putting in the hours and developing methods to make the desert bloom, to innovative Israeli tech that is creating a global smart farming network. The future looks bright, and the sky's the limit. We use technology and innovation to grow crops in the desert despite the harsh conditions. But when you take those conditions and combine them with agricultural know-how and medical science, miracles can take place. Hello, Rivki. Shalom. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Is this your famous lab? Yes. Please enter. Thank you. <laughs> At a young age, Dr. Rivki Ophir packed her bags and headed to Israel's Arava Desert, where she got her PhD in plant biology. For decades, she has been studying the healing properties of plants native to the Arava. And what she's discovered is that their ability to heal is directly related to the desert environment in which they grow. So we're here because you present a fascinating story. So maybe we can start sort of with the background story of how you got to hear today. Love brought me here. This was in 1973. I joined my husband, Moshele. He was the founder of the uh, Moshav Chatseva. From 1973 to 1982, we worked on the fields and raised three kids. And I always dream about going back to science. 
Lucky me, on 1982, I went to do my PhD in Ben Gurion University. I asked the question, why the immune system failed to eradicate cancer diseases? It's quite relevant still. It's quite, quite relevant still. Being a mother, travel a lot in the desert. Around me, I saw the desert plants, and I already had the idea that there is some secret in this plant, and maybe I will be able to harness them to my research. In one of the plants, which is called Achillea fragmentosa, I found something very interesting, not just against cancer, but against uh, brain diseases. Mm -hmm. There was one compound that I really liked, so the chemists say, bring me a lot of this material, and I will uh, separate this compound and give you a tube with this compound. So I went to the desert, to the same place where I collect this plant, took the seeds, went to the farm, irrigate, fertilize, etc. And I have a huge amount of bags with the plant. And I went to this chemist in Tel Aviv, and he said, I need to disappoint you. I can find this compound only in the desert plant. I don't find it where you irrigate. While trying to extract this miracle compound, Dr. Rivki stumbled across the true secret of the desert. And many people, when they imagine a plant, we want to give it the best conditions. But in reality, especially in the desert, they need some kind of stress. The plants that grow in the desert, going through many, many harsh conditions, like irradiation, salt, sun, no rain. The quality only comes out when it's hard. Yes. So this is the famous lab? Yes, in the lab we have cells. Uh-huh. Cancer cells which grow here in the incubator. Can I take a look? You can look at them. In order to be expert, you need to look in the microscope. I'm so not an expert. Yes. So the yellow ones in your sample are the cancer cells that died from desert plant extracts. Exactly. Yes. That's and, a, and quite a good many, sample there. Yes, we have many samples like this. You say this in passing as if it's like an obvious thing, but what you have here is, is examples of cancer cells that are being killed by, by yes. natural plant substances. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. quite a statement. Exactly. For you, it's like, yes, another day in the office, but for most people, that's, that's news. Exactly. It's not chemo, it's not radiation. Yes. That is killing cancer cells. So many years, I tell the people that there is something unique in the desert, and suddenly I was able to prove it. It's just a beautiful process. Say, like, look, there must be something about these plants. There's something about the hardship, and then you, you proved it. It's almost impossible to miss the analogies between the personal journey and the story of reclaiming the desert. You sort of did that same process on the cellular level. I agree with you, I really agree. Thank you for making all these conclusions. It's your story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us as we provide a spiritual insight of what God is doing in Israel and in the Middle East. If you want to learn more about what God is doing in Israel, make sure to visit us on our webpage and follow us on social media. Shalom and God bless you for Jerusalem.